The province that most people were waiting to hear was mm. Gauteng. Mm -hmm. What was behind the decision to replace Nvula Mukanyana? Well, the ANC is a process-driven organization, and uh, what we give leeway to provinces to do is they can, at provincial level, um, have a discussion, a debate, and they provide the National Executive Committee with three names. Now, in the case of Gauteng, they had four, they had four nominations, and uh, Nomvula Mokunyani was one of them. Uh, um, and there was also Tembi Mehwe and Barbara Creasy, as well as David Makura, and they voted. And when the vote came out, the three candidates were left to be taken forward to the NEC. And... Uh, a very strong woman, a very capable uh, premier, Comrade Nomvula Mokunyani, didn't make the cut. And, um, you know, we, we, we thought, well, we couldn't fault the process. They'd also consulted very widely within the alliance. Um, and we have in our stable of capable women a person that can be uh, deployed by the organization elsewhere. And, and we're not looking upon it as a loss. We're actually looking upon it as ha having another very capable woman to put in a place to put in place somewhere else. Hopefully, um, you know, uh, we, we can we can go in another direction. So it's it's about the process. It's about the fact that this this uh, province did we have given them that leeway, give us three names, and they came with three candidates, and she wasn't one of the three. One of the big stories following the May 7 polls was the fact mm. that uh, there were a lot of votes lost by the ANC in this <coughs> specific <coughs> province. Yes. Does that have something to do with uh, what the outcome was that we saw yesterday? I, I think, we, as I said yesterday, I'm, we're very concerned about the Gauteng province, but I don't think you can ascribe what happened in Gauteng to any individual. Certainly not to, to Nomvula Mukuniani. When you think back over the period of time that she was the premier, you had the 2010 World Cup in this province. Uh, very well run, very, very professionally done. Governments, instruments in place throughout the province. Houting is one of the provinces where serious delivery has actually taken place. And one analyst, uh, Stephen Friedman uh, wrote about that a, f a few days ago. This is the province where serious delivery has taken place. So that is not uh, one of the issues we believe is the cause of this. I mean, people raised Baker's Dahl, and I went to look at the statistics of Baker's Dahl, and we got 80% of the, of the vote in Baker's Dahl. So I think that, no, it, it wasn't, uh, uh, that wasn't the cause. I think, I think not. Can you take us through the eight different premiers that uh, were um, yes. selected and also the reasons mm -hmm. behind their selection? Well, I think overall, um, if one looks at the overall objective of what we need to do for the country going forward, the first um, matter that we looked at was we needed people who would be able to stabilize each province immediately, effectively, and also begin to put in place the necessary machinery to take us forward to 2016 a local government election. Local government is where we will uh, put our focus on um, and we're expecting the premiers that are in place to have a very high level uh, turnover of service delivery. So the first things that were looked at before we looked at people was what was needed. When the provinces brought their nominees um, some of the incumbents um, were kept in place. Uh, Stan Matabati has only been a premier for about eight months and he stabilized the province at government level and within the ANC as well. So there was a view from the province and we accepted that view that he should be kept in place. David Mabuza has done similarly. He's also stabilized um, Pumalanga, which has a long history of instability. Uh, Within, uh, within the government structures itself. He's done that. And also, uh, he's also the chairperson of the ANC, stabilized the ANC as well. Uh, if we go to um, KZN, Senzo Nkunu has just been a premier for a couple of months. And again, we believe that uh, he's, he's a very good person. He was MEC for Health. He did great work when he was MEC for Health. There was no real uh, issue from the province. And they only came with... All those provinces brought three candidates and their preferences at the top of the list was for the people I've mentioned. And that also plays a part in how a decision is made. If we go to the Eastern Cape, 
Um, I think the Eastern Cape, um, this is actually the first time that the province itself has had an opportunity to say, we want this person. Prior to this, the province has always had to accept a national intervention of one sort or another. In, in Pumula Maswala, they've got a man who comes from a trade union movement, long history in uh, governance, uh, MEC for finance, very sober, um, very strong person. And uh, Ngotkolo Kivit has not lost. She is going to be the speaker of the legislature in that province. Um, uh, in the northwest province, uh, there was a strong view held that the chairperson of the province should be the um, uh, premier so that we could bring some, some stability to that province. And it's been unstable for a very long time. Um, we are still concerned about that province. Well, uh, uh, you know, he's been the Speaker of Parliament. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, we've, we've given him, him an opportunity. But I think the thing I need to explain to you is that the province has brought three candidates. At the head of every one of those three candidates was their preferred choice, and we couldn't fault that, that those choices. The only objection we had was that um, they had cut out women. Yes. And, and that's a really serious um, setback for the ANC. And for that reason, we have imposed uh, a ruling that says they must have 60% of their MECs must be women. So in the executive of every province, 60% will have to, we'll be, have women. to be women. And where there's a male premier, the speaker of the legislature must be a woman. So we inserted that as a, as, as a principle, and the NEC can do that because we're the highest decision-making body between conferences. It doesn't really compensate. And I think we've also looked at the fault line. You have uh, nine provincial chairpersons of the ANC who are men. You have nine provincial secretaries of the ANC who are men. The outcome of any process would obviously favor, um, in this case, strong leadership in, male, in men would favor strong male leadership elsewhere. And uh, this is a problem. The male dominance is a matter that we will discuss at our, at our next uh, General Council. We can't forego our policy issue. And, yeah. and so that's, that's what we've done. All right, you guys are going to definitely be discussing that, and I'm sure it's going Absolutely. to be very vociferous the discussions that you guys will be having yes, to ensure be. the gender parity. Seeing now we only have a one woman a premier right. out of the eight uh, that are put in place by the ANC. Mr. Chester Duarte, it's been great to have you here on Morning Live. Thank, Thank you very much for Thank you very much.